You know, the account of the feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle to be recorded in each one of the four Gospels in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It can variously be interpreted as in terms of communion or the Lord's Supper, as a parallel with Moses and the manna in the wilderness. It reminds us of the line from the Lord's Prayer, Give us this day our daily bread and certainly has something to do with a fear of scarcity and God's surprising, gracious abundance. Now, you know, John is the only one of the four accounts to include the character of the little boy with the sack lunch. And it seems legitimate to also observe that whenever somebody begins to share what they have, it seems to stimulate others to share as well. When we have the courage, or maybe even the naivete, to give what we have, to put what we have in Jesus' hands, there is enough for everyone. When Jesus takes our gifts and blesses them, there is plenty for everyone with 12 baskets left over. Do you believe it? God is good, and you know the line that comes back all the time, all the time you say, God is good. God is good? All the time. All the time. God is good. When we use our gifts for the glory of God, it is a blessing for ourselves and for others as well. And our gifts are not just things, not just sack lunches or money or stuff we have. Our gifts include what we often call talent or time or service along with the things. You know, last Friday, many members of the Church of Peace were at Lincoln Park for a picnic to end our summer club program along with the children from the Parks and Recreation program at the various schools in Rock Island. We served over 200 children that day, along with quite a number of adults. And there were hot dog cookers and ice cream scoopers and hand sanitizer people, uh, a tally person, a baked bean scooper, uh, helpers in general, you get the picture. Deacon Al Edgeworth from Truth Temple across the street and I made and served popcorn continuously for about two hours with our new fancy popcorn popper. And this does not mention our music people, Mary Kay and Katie Casey, who helped the kids that were in our program here at the church, put on a little <coughs> musical show about African, about an African <coughs> parable. And then there were camp counselors and leaders you know, when we got back after the picnic was over and we were at this corner door here trying to get all the stuff back in our church building, I counted five trucks, um, each with things that we had uh, taken. What a hoot. You know, I was, uh, with all the ice chests and the leftover food and the tables, God knows that at the park, there was enough food for everybody, and there was plenty left over as well. And I believe the greatest gifts that day were the audacity to put it all together and the faith to imagine that all of it was possible and the generosity of spirit to take a piece of that job and do it. I was so proud of the Church of Peace that I was about ready to pop my buttons. When we share our gifts to the glory of God, wonderful things can happen. Now in the Old Testament reading of the account of David and Bathsheba, we have a cautionary tale about what can happen when our gifts are not used properly. You know, the most telling line of that whole narrative is the first one that Mitch read. In the spring of the year, in the time when the kings go out to battle, David sent Joab 
with his officers, and David remained in Jerusalem. You remember that David was a gifted military leader. The chant of the people was, Saul has killed his thousands, and David has killed his ten thousands. Saul was the biggest guy around, but David was little and smart and a charismatic, charming leader. David used guerrilla tactics. David used tactical advantage. People underestimated David consistently, and he used that to his advantage as well. David had helped rival groups work together for a common cause. You know, that's why they had kings in those days. Whether David was depressed or if he thought that it made him look even more powerful to send others out to do his job, this was when he got in trouble. And the troops in the field did not fare especially well either. And the fact that David failed to use his gifts resulted in him abusing his position and power, becoming a sexual predator, plotting for the death of one of his loyal officers, and defeat in the battlefield for his nation. When we use our gifts generously for the glory of God, there is great blessing for everyone. When we fail to use our gifts, there is heartache for ourselves and for others. My mother had a sly sense of humor. One day we were listening on the radio to a gospel singer belt out the song, God will take care of you. Mom quit. You know, you can't tell whether it's a threat or a promise. <laughs> when we use our gifts, we are blessed. When we fail to use our gifts, we, are, we diminish ourselves and others as well. And as Walter Cronkite ended his broadcast, and that's the way it is. You know, some folks do what they can to make good stuff happen. Some folks sit back with a sense of entitlement and wait for others to do stuff for them. And we all know which group is happier, healthier, and more blessed. And we also know which group is more likely to get themselves into trouble. We're blessed today to have a group of talented musicians and for the most part they're non-professionals here to give glory to God and to lead us with music in the big service today. And we are grateful to them for sharing their gifts with us. And they all seem to be having a pretty good time as well. And we know that to keep being able to make music requires that folks use their talent, use their gift. And there is some additional quality to joining in the discipline of a group and playing music in public that goes far beyond playing music for one's own enjoyment in the privacy of one's own home. And with a musical gift, as with so many other talents, one needs to use it or lose it. So we thank our musicians for sharing their gift with Jesus and for using their gifts to praise God and giving their gifts to edify and inspire us. And we pray that they will see their gifts grow ever more a blessing to themselves as well.